Hampstead, a leafy borough in the north of London. I've lived near here most of my life, but it wasn't until a quiet Saturday morning recently that I found myself wondering, I wonder if there's an interesting story behind Hampstead. So I went on Google and found that there was. Before the 1700s, Hampstead used to be a peaceful rural area with nothing but a few farms, two windmills, and a chapel. Hampstead first started attracting people in large numbers after 1703, when a doctor called William Gibbons declared that the local water from Hampstead was particularly rich in minerals, especially iron, and the water seemed to have healing properties. Around this time an official well was constructed and Hampstead became famous for its healing water. Dr. Gibbons moved into this house, which is today called Berg House and is found a short walk away from the Hampstead Well. Today, this house is the Hampstead Museum. People came to Hampstead Well to benefit from the water's medicinal qualities. Hampstead Well became a spa town, a smaller version of other well-known British spa towns like Bath or Cheltenham. Near the well, there's a road called Flask Walk, which is probably named so because around this area the water would have been bottled in flasks and served. A bottle of Hampstead's finest water sold for threepence per flask in the pub in Flask Walk. Although Hampstead was successful as a spa town for a little while in the 1700s, and its waters were carried for sale all the way to Hoburn and Charing Cross, where it was sold in apothecaries, amongst other places, it became less popular in the 1800s, probably in part because there were records suggesting reports of rowdy behaviour in this area, which may have put off the fancier clientele and eventually the spa was closed in 1882. Despite the spa closing, to this day, the street names in this area of Hampstead still show hints of the importance that the well once played in this area. Another interesting remnant of the past in Hampstead is Whitestone Pond, a pond that I've driven past hundreds of times, yet have never stopped to look at it as more than a pretty water feature. Turns out, this pond was made not for beauty, but for a very practical purpose. When it was built, it was often called the Horse Pond, because it was built as a resting stop for horses to get a drink back in the horse and carriage days. Every spot in Hampstead has a story behind it. There is one story about a Navy lieutenant who lived in this house in 1791 and had aspirations to be an admiral, which is why the house became known as the Admiral's House. He was so passionate about ships that he had his roof built to resemble a ship's deck. The famous British painter John Constable, who also lived in this area around the 1820s, was once inspired by the unusual architecture of the house and painted it in a piece he called The Grove Hampstead. The lieutenant who lived here is said to have had an eccentric habit of celebrating royal birthdays and British naval victories, where he used to fire a cannonball from his roof in celebration. <coughs> This story, and even the house, sparked the imagination of the author P. L. Travers, who integrated the legend of the eccentric lieutenant into her book, Mary Poppins, where the character Admiral Boom has a house that also resembles a ship, and he too has a habit of shooting cannonballs off his roof. Another Hampstead story is that of the poet John Keats, who moved to live here in 1817. He moved in with his brothers at Well Walk after abandoning his medical training in the city. In the nearby Hampstead Heath, Keats is said to have gone for walks with fellow poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge and talk about poetry and metaphysics. Keats later moved to a nearby house in Hampstead, Wentworth Place. It was here that Keats wrote his famous poem Ode to a Nightingale and four more of his greatest poems which is perhaps why this house was chosen to become the Keats Museum. If you visit the Keats Museum today, you can sit on the grass in the garden and imagine a different time where Keats would have sat in that very same garden, writing down his poems. In the same time period that Keats lived in Hampstead, around 1819, the famous British painter John Constable also moved to live here. From 1827 onwards, he lived here at number 40 Well Walk, and as a result of him living here, there are a few paintings in his portfolio of the Hampstead area. There are a lot more stories about other great people who lived in Hampstead. 
In fact, there's a whole Wikipedia page that gives an astonishingly long list of all the famous people who have lived in Hampstead at some point in time. A few names that stood out for me were Daphne du Maurier, Elgar, George Orwell, Mondrian, and Sigmund Freud. As time goes on, Hampstead continues to touch the lives of many people, including many modern-day celebrities. A few well-known people who have been said to live in Hampstead at some point include Judy Dench, Emma Thompson, Ridley Scott, Liam Gallagher, Benedict Cumberbatch, Michael McIntyre, and Harry Styles. I'm sure they all have their own stories about their experiences in Hampstead. My own story about Hampstead is a simple one, of enjoying all that the place has to offer today. I like the high street with its interesting shops, and the famous Hampstead crepes, and I like the little pretty side streets. I like visiting the nearby Hampstead Heath, seeing its various landscapes, from wild long grass meadows to fresh scented woodlands. I enjoy seeing the reflections upon its ponds, and in the summer it's great seeing people enjoying a refreshing swim in the waters. I like visiting Parliament Hill with its views over London, where on summer days people come to picnic and fly kites. And now that I've looked into Hampstead's background a little, I feel like I have another dimension of appreciation for this place. Seeing it from the perspective of both past and present, and wondering what new stories the future may bring.